from Lean Startup Machine. So this is Ray. Hi, Ray. That's Nathan. <laughs> Ray failed his first driver's test. <laughs> and Nathan is the meditation ninja. So everyone get up. Yeah, get up. Please. Up. <laughs> oh, take a big deep breath. <coughs> oh, stretch. Oh, stretch, stretch. Feel your feet on the ground, your arms in the air. Yeah, that's good. Need my friends. That's good. <laughs> Not my friends. <laughs> He's a developer. <laughs> so, so everybody that has done a startup, please stay standing, and everyone else sit down. <laughs> so you guys definitely are against the trend, um, and I think there's something fundamentally wrong with that. So we're here to talk to you today a little bit about. Um, going forward in, in the science of entrepreneurship. Um, Sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> What's your password? <laughs> Obviously, I can't, I can't project that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Give me a password! <laughs> that was embarrassing. Okay, there we go. Yeah, something is fundamentally wrong. So, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the science of entrepreneurship. <laughs> so there, there is something fundamentally wrong that 9 out of 10 startups fail, right? So in 2006, you see all these companies that launched onto the marketplace. In 2009, these are the ones that are left standing. So, ouch, that kind of hurts, right? <laughs> well, not for you, right? You're still standing. <laughs> well, uh, so, why do startups fail? What do you guys think? Yeah. That's uh, team. Team? Founding team. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. Like Finance. bad communication, Finance. financing. No good. Yeah. You're building the wrong thing. Oh, uh huh. <laughs> I think yeah. we got it. Yeah. Different people want different things. Uh -huh. Communication. Communications, yeah, different things, different priorities. It's an early prototype. Cool, so the vast majority of startups fail not because. Oh, like that. <laughs> Double tap. You test it? <laughs> Eric, keep talking. Yeah, so. It's not that startups are uh, out there in the world to. Uh, sorry, so. There you go. Wow. Thanks. So, it's not that uh, it's not because people created a product or they were able to build a product because they built a product that no one wants. Um, and so, what do you think startups succeed? Innovative. They're innovative. Innovation. Yeah. What else? What right, timing. Well. right timing. Mm -hmm. They hit the market Provide in the right value. time. Value. Fixing the problems. Uh huh. Cool. Right. So we think a lot of startups they succeed in the market because they were able to learn from the from launching that product on the market. So um, and so what we'd like to talk to you today is about how to how that failure is the secret sauce to of creating a lean startup. And so I mean I guess that's my cue. What's uh, what's a lean startup? Anyone? Have you guys heard of this term? Yeah. yeah? And everyone is uh, there, I guess. Yeah, everyone's the <laughs> lean startup here. Great. Uh, so I mean, for those that haven't heard of lean startup, I just want to touch on it real quick. It started by Eric Ries. He um, he started writing blogs on startuplessonlearn.com, and about a year and a half ago, he started uh, he launched a book called The Lean Startup. And if you haven't heard of it, it's worth checking out. Uh, basically, lean startup marriage, marriages, uh, well, marries uh, customer development, which is from Steve Blank, and it has been in the marketing industry for a very long time with agile development, which is uh, something that Eric is really familiar with. And, um, it's okay, why are you? All right. 
Well, I mean, so I'll keep talking about that. So uh, basically, our company, Linkstar Machine, uh, we work with Eric, who is uh, one of our main advisors, uh, to um, to provide trainings for um, entrepreneurs and help them practice customer development and do link uh, practice link as well. Wherever we are, cool. Technology, yes, feel this. <laughs> Um, where are we? All right. So, um, lean startup in essence, um, what what it comes down to is how do you maximize value creation and how do you minimize waste? And uh, this, uh, it's failure, of course, is a big part of uh, um, lean startup. I'm sure some of you might have heard of uh, fail fast. And uh, obviously, we're not aiming to fail. We're aiming to succeed. But if you can fail really fast, like what Ian was saying before then uh, you will have a higher chance to get to success, which is what uh, Nathan was talking about earlier. So uh, for most startups, um, I think the, they succeed, the success rate raised by 23% if they pivoted away from their original idea. So um, they learned from their mistakes, implemented those mistakes into their original idea, and then launch, relaunch, and that's how they um, get to product market fit. Uh, so, what is the biggest risk in um, a startup's, um, I mean, for a startup team? I think we touch on like building something that no one wants, so building products that no one care about. Um, and in essence, that's uh, in translation, that's really wasting time, right? You only have uh, you know, so much money in your bank account that's gonna support you for half a year or for 10 months as a, as a whole team. Um, if you're building, spending like eight, six months on a product and no one wants, then you basically wasted six months. You have to figure out how to get to product market fit with, for, in the next four months. So Lean Startup, in one sentence to describe to you, it's really a practice to help you de-risk your value proposition by doing really small, fast experiments with the market, with real customers. And um, by doing so, you fail fast, you learn fast, you iterate. Uh, so, how do you actually fail fast? Like, I wanted to hammer this term home. This is a really big concept. Fail, um, to fail fast, there's something called the build, measure, learn. That's a, a major part of the Lean Startup methodology. And it's coined by uh, Eric Ries. Um, there are many blog posts on this term, so go Google it. Um, but essentially, is how do you build a little small experiment to test your value proposition? You know, experiment, value proposition. And uh, how do you deliver this experiment to your real customers, customers that will actually care about your product, how do you get it into their hands? And the goal here is get through this cycle, build, measure, learn as fast as you can to get to validate learning. So um, a big example, a very well-known example of uh, build, measure, learn, MVP, uh, was done by this group of people at Dropbox. Um, do everyone use Dropbox here? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Awesome product, right? But. I don't know if you guys remember, it was uh, only 2008 that came out. And uh, when 2008, like, around the time they put their MVP, their minimum viable product on uh, Dig, <coughs> um, they had only about 5,000 beta users. And uh, with this MVP, they got to 75,000 beta testers. So how they do that? They were talking to a lot of VCs, a lot of people in the industry, just like, hey, we're building a, a, storage, um, a storage cloud uh, thing like it will be really helpful, very useful for everyone. Everyone will love it, uh, but they're not getting the message through because VCs tell them, yeah, there are about ten other companies that do the same thing, and um, they know that ten other companies do the same thing. But what was the experience? The experience was crap. They didn't, they didn't like the products out there. They were frustrated with other products out there. So in a way, they were trying to solve their own problem as well. <coughs> so. What they want to convey with their MVP, which was actually a video, you can find it on TechCrunch. Um, just search Dropbox TechCrunch MVP. Um, and you'll see it's really only a four minute video that shows you the user experience in, in terms of using Dropbox. So you can add a file in the computer, the, the file will show up on the other computer. Okay, um, very simple. They had not built anything. Up to that point. Awesome. Okay. Um, so, um, so then they went on and they, they blew up. Now one of the biggest, most well-known startups, and one of the poster childs for, um, well, poster children really, for uh, being startup. 
Yeah, so th the core of this is that they've used their customer base to build a product. So what we're really advocating in Lean Startup methodologies is that you're able to actually be in relationship with your customer as you go through that iterative process. So uh, one of the big terms that we use, and it's a bumper sticker, is get out of the building. Go talk to your customers. Go get in relationship with them. Go understand what the real pain is and learn how to create a solution to overcome that pain point. So, and, and what we're talking about right now is customer development, and which is really about finding that pain point, uncovering it with the customer, and then building a small solution to helping them overcome that. It's really letting the customer lead you into the innovation that you want to make inside of your product. So, and, and what we say is that after, after you've got, gotten to finding that problem and creating a small solution is that will people actually give you some type of currency for that solution? Will they give you cash? Will they give you some type of letters of intent? Will they give you email addresses? Um, will they friend you on Facebook? You know, just some way that there's actual some type of exchange. They've put some fat in the fire so that you actually are now, they're, they're communicating, oh wow, you've uncovered this for me and, and you've also created an effective solution. So yeah, what, what we want to say is test your assumptions. You know, find out like, you know, does the pen drop out of the air? Will the apple actually fall? Find out for yourselves. Don't just listen to a book. Don't just read something. Actually get out there and be in your business and get in relationship with your customers. Find out what they want and build it for them. Um, so uh, we hope that in the next five minutes, um, we can run you through how do you get started with Lean Startup. Uh, so m many of you are, in your own startup will have a project that you're working on. And uh, while we do this at our workshop, we believe you can do this on your own uh, as well. But, but do come to the workshop. <laughs> yeah, started. Like, so for every business, uh, there's got to be hypotheses. There's a value proposition that you, uh, you hold to. There's a vision as a founder um, that you want to deliver. Um, like when we talk about Dropbox, they, um, you know, they put their MVP on the Dig community. They know Dig community is mostly tech geeks, and at the time at least. And they, um, so they assume that those are the type of people that are early adopters, that really understand their vision. So your business as well has a, you know, a group of early adopters that you, you can tap into. Um, risky assumption is another core concept. Basically, this is what we're talking about, building MVP, the build, measure, learn loop. To de-risk your business, you have to look at your business as a whole, <coughs> your value proposition, what are some of the supporting assumptions, and uh, how do you pick them out, isolate them, and do you run the experiment to make sure that what you assume holds true, and we'll go deeper into that. So that covers MVP part. So this is really, uh, this is a workflow that I want to show you guys how you can actually apply you know, starting tonight, tomorrow. All right, so let's look at some value proposition. I mean, everyone knows YouTube, Facebooks, two of the biggest companies out there right now. Uh, well, YouTube owned by Google. But uh, when YouTube's value proposition is, we're gonna let people share media with each other, right? Uh, movies, films, whatever it is. Short films that you did at home with your kid or the dog, your cat, whatever. You feel like you have a need to share that people would want to watch it. And if it's good, like it might go viral. That's how right, Justin Bieber came about. And uh, you know, I'm a fan. And, uh, Facebook, right? Facebook also, he, the pro proposition here is that we have real relationship with each other. And they believe that they can bring this online. And were they both, is Facebook today what Facebook was in 2003? Probably not. It, probably learned a lot about from its users and then iterated, and so did YouTube. Um, but what I want to say is that your business has a value proposition as well. And you probably remember back in 2003 or 2002, around when YouTube and Facebook came out, probably some of your friends, you know, just think about it, maybe one or two of your friends had told you about this thing, and you're like, oh, that's whack, that's totally ludicrous, like, why would I ever want to make friends online, right? But, but now it's become such a normal thing. So what I want to say is, your friend, that friend told you about Facebook or YouTube was probably an early adopter. And these are a definition of early adopter. Let me run through them really quickly. These are customers that believe in your vision, <coughs> understand your vision, because they have a pain. They also felt the pain that you are observing in the market. So for Dropbox in, um, case, 
The pain is that I cannot move my file between computers easily. I need a USB stick. I need, I can't share files over multiple devices. And there's a person out there back in the day before Dropbox came out, probably set up FTP server just so he can download his files, right? Um, that was the person who went through the pain and didn't like it, didn't think the solution today was the, was the right solution. So he went ahead and actually uh, did something about it, committed resources, time, money uh, to, to make his life a little easier. So as a business owner, as a founder, you want to focus on who those people are. How can I get those people into shaping, to, into your product development process with me so that they can shape the product for me in a way that I'm not building someone absolutely no one wants, all right? So once you know who your early adopters are, who the customer segment is, um, you have to look at your business again and say, okay, my value proposition, if I was YouTube or Facebook back in the day, you know, my biggest risk is that people don't believe that internet is the medium where we can share information and feel like we're in the same community. You know, if, if none of us engage in Web 2.0, basically we're stuck back in the GeoCity type of world and uh, people just put up a picture and you're like, oh, that's a good looking picture, and, but no one comments on it, then Facebook and YouTube probably wouldn't exist, right? So uh, if you think of it that way, and Dropbox as well, if no one wants your product and you hadn't had a chance to test out those assumptions, then you're basically spinning your wheel. You're doing rhetorical thinking with your team and you're not actually going out to talk to customers and get empirical evidence from your customer. Um, so once you identify the risky assumption of your business at the current state, you would be able to design an MVP to test that. Right? Dropbox designed MVP in the form of a video to show people the user experience and they're like, wow, this is something cool. Their beta tester expanded by you know, hundreds of folks. Um, so MVP is a word that is big in lean startup community and uh, it's known as minimum viable product. And what we want, to, want you to go away today with is MVP is essentially your business value proposition, your hypothesis and uh, your assumptions, how, how you are willing to test those assumptions. So combine together, uh, you're delivering MVP. So Reid Hoffman from LinkedIn has said this once, so if you're not ashamed, not embarrassed about your prototype, essentially your MVP, you've, um, you're already too late. Basically, you already committed too much time in development. You already moved beyond the time where you can still incorporate early uh, adopters into your product development process. All right? Um, and from, from Eric Ries, he said that MVP is the least amount of effort that you can commit to building a, uh, a prototype of some sort that will go help you get through the build measure learn loop. Um, so let's tie all that together. Um, this is the workflow that we use in our workshop. And I think if you have the determination, you would be able to do this at home. You know? Um, well actually, hopefully not at home. Hopefully get out of the building and talk to people. Uh, so you uh, focus on a valid proposition. You come out with a couple of assumptions, like 10, 15 of them. There's got to be 10, 15 supporting assumptions to your valid proposition. And we can chat later about that too. Uh, you design an experiment, build. You, you measure it by actually running an experiment and then you validate or invalidate it. If your MVP is invalidated, so if Dropbox didn't get any sort of people sign up because they, no one cared, no one really, no one gave a shit, then uh, maybe they have to go back to the drawing board and say, hey, uh, maybe it's not cloud storage that people need, it's probably something else. Um, or if, they, if people did say they want this and gave you currency, like what uh, Nathan said, um, then you persevere, you go back to your other 14 assumptions and figure out what is now the riskiest. So through doing this loop, you will then de-risk your valid proposition one step at a time. So hopefully, like 10 months later, you'll be on the board like one of them. These are all pretty famous lean startups, and um, you know their stories are really public, so you can look online to see what they did, what kind of MVP they did, and uh, there are a lot of interviews, especially Kiss Metrics. Hiten Shad is uh, one of our mentors, and he's super awesome. He shares a lot of great insight on his metrics blog. So uh, go take a look <coughs> at that. Buffer is based out of Hong Kong. Um, they're actually in Israel right now, but um, they also have some great stories to share. And a, a short one would be they basically 
put on a landing page. And this is a common practice now. You put on a landing page, tell people this is what I'm providing you, and people, and let people give you their email address and say, I want to buy this, and then, whoops, sorry, we're not ready yet. Let me contact you later. Uh, so so th they pioneered that practice. Okay, uh, so here are other resources you can read about Lean Startup. Read about Lean Startup, but we wanted to do Lean Startup. Um, we're running a workshop August 31st in Singapore, and uh, we are hoping to come to KL as well. So um, please send us an email and let us know that you want us here. Uh, maybe you don't, then we invalidated our assumptions. <laughs> 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 <laughs>